Hi students, um, I'm back with another pronunciation video and here we're going to be practicing the difference of the sound between can and can't and some different um, ways that we use them, how we use them in the question, how the pronunciation changes in the question form um, and these types of things. So let me jump over here. Um, our pronunciation of contractions in spoken American English talking about can can't and cannot. Remember, when we talk about pronunciation, absolutely there is this beautiful, clear pronunciation. And as people who are learning English, we are more correct to use the clear pronunciation. It will make your interactions with native speakers of American English easier if you will be using the correct, clear pronunciation. But we need to be able to hear, we need to be able to interpret and comprehend the reduced pronunciation. So that's always the goal. Um, after we go through some pronunciation discussion, I do have a small test for you at the end, um, not a full dictation. You could use it as a dictation if you prefer, but really I just want you to try and see if you can catch the can or the can't. Okay. Um, so always thinking about contractions, when should we be using the contraction? It's very acceptable to use the contraction and the reduced form in everyday speech, in everyday conversation. Um, it is considered informal to use contractions in your writing. So for example, your university level writing, um, thesis, dissertation, working on an examination that will get you into a university, a TOEFL or IELTS, I would use the full form of the verb instead of the contracted form of the verb. However, except in those formal situations, I am using the contraction on a daily basis. Um, when we're talking about can, the beautiful thing about can is that it doesn't change. I can, you can, he can, she can, we can, it can, they can. Um, can in my long form is can. But most of the time in my reduced pronunciation, my faster pronunciation, I'm saying can. I can go. You can go. He can go. She can help. It can be worse. Uh, we can help you next week. We can. We can help you next week. They can. They can work. They can stay at our house. When I'm pronouncing this can, can, I have very loose lips and I have a very relaxed mouth. There's no tension at all in my cheeks or in my lips. I can go. Can, can, can. Everything around here is loose. Everything around here is relaxed. Um, I can go, they can stay, can, can. I can help you if you need it. She told me that she can go. I wonder if they can work. Your listening can improve. Really, 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 I promise your listening can improve. When we come to the negative, can't, ant, 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 there's a much stronger nasal sound. There's a much stronger sound coming through this part of your nose. Um, eh, 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 eh. You have some tension, you have some tightness in your cheeks. I can work. I can't work. They can go. They can't go. You can see the tension in my cheeks and you can feel it in your own lips. She can help you. She can't help you. Aunt, aunt, aunt. I can't believe she said that. The students can't stop talking. Aunt, aunt, aunt. The students can't stop talking. Also, you don't hear the sound of the t for can't. 
This is what we call unreleased, meaning I keep the T in my mouth. I'm not letting out, I'm not releasing the air out of my mouth. I can't. I can't. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. They can't stop talking. They can't, ant, ant, they can't stop talking. I'm not releasing that T, can't. I'm keeping that T inside, can't. I can't believe it. Again, the beautiful thing about can't is it doesn't change. I can't, you can't, he can't, she can't, we can't, etc. Ant, 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 can't. Again, you're going to have that the tight lips and you're going to have the tense mouth. The full word of cannot, cannot, grammatically acceptable, but really, I am only using the full word of cannot when I want to give emphasis, when I want to give strength or um, force to my words. You cannot go. You can't go. You cannot believe this. Oh my gosh, I cannot tell you. I pronounce it fully when I'm giving extra emphasis or extra stress to the word. I cannot believe she said that to you. The teachers cannot keep their doors open. When I'm putting this into the question form, again, the can doesn't change. Can you go? Can she go? Can we go? Can they go? Um, can he? Can it? Can it start yet? The car, can it start yet? Can you go? Can she go? You still hear the shortened can, can, can she go? Can he go? Ah, here, I do delete my H. You don't hear can, he, go. You hear, can he go? Can he, can he go? Can we go? Can they go? How's your brain feeling so far? I hope you're doing okay. Um, I think we're about halfway through this lesson. Keep it up. When I use the contraction in question form, when can you? When can you start? When can you start? Who can you call? Who can you call for help? How can you get home? How can you get home? How can you do that to me? How can you do that to me? What can you do? You can't change it. What can you do? Um, where can you find good sambusa in Fargo? Where can you find? Where can you? Where can you find? All of them again, we're hearing that shortened can. It is possible to have the negative in question form. Often when I'm using the negative in question form, there is a feeling that I think the answer is no, I think I already know the answer. Again, we're hearing the strong, tight lips, aunt, 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 can't you? Can't you help me? Here, because of the T and the Y, the T and the Y are blending together to make the sound of ch, ch, like the sound of TCH, watch, watch. Can't you? Can't you? Why can't you? Why can't you help me? Why can't you help me? That T, that T is not released. The T and the Y making this sound of ch. So I end up with this sound of can't you? Can't you? Now there is some difference between can as the modal verb, as the auxiliary verb, and can as a noun, like a can of soda, a can of paint. So if I have a sentence that uses both can as a modal and can as a noun, you'll hear one of them reduced and the other one strong. For example, this sentence, she can drink a can of soda. 
she can drink, she can drink a can, can, she can drink a can of soda. How many cans of paint can you bring? Can you, can you bring? How many cans of paint? How many cans of paint can you, can you buy? How can you stand eating a can of tuna? How can you stand eating a can of tuna? Okay, now's the time for your test. Get out your pen and paper. You're gonna number from one to eight. I'm just gonna read them to you twice. I don't want you to write the whole sentence. I just want you to write can or can't, can or can't. Remember, can, 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 can't, ant, ant. I can go, I can't go. She can help you, she can't help you. How can you go? Why can you go? Why can't you go? Ant, ant, ant. Okay? Um, I'm hiding my face here so that you're not using my lips to help give you some clues. Um, number your paper one through eight. Pause if you need to. And let's begin. Number one, I'm sorry, I can help you tomorrow, but not today. I'm sorry, I can help you tomorrow, but not today. Remember, you're just writing the can or can't. Number two, can you swim? Can you swim? Three, can't you swim? Can't you swim? Four, how can we get in touch with you? How can we get in touch with you? Five, I'm gonna be busy so I can't come. I'm going to be busy so I can't come. Six. Let me know if I can help. Let me know if I can help. Seven. Don't you know that you can't park here? Don't you know that you can't park here? And eight. You can go anywhere you want. You can go anywhere you want. All right, let's come back and let's review those. Again, I hope that you only wrote the can or the can't. Um, unless you really want to push yourself, rewind it, listen a few more times, try to get the whole sentences down. But I'm not showing you the whole sentence here unlike a standard dictation lesson. Number one, I'm sorry, I can help you tomorrow. I can, I can, I can help you tomorrow. Number two, can you swim? Can you swim? Three, can't you swim? Can't you swim? Four, how can we get in touch with you? How can we get in touch with you? Five, I'm gonna be busy, so I can't come. Can't, 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 I can't come. I'm gonna be busy, so I can't come. Six, let me know if I can help. Let me know if I can help. Seven, don't you know that you can't park here? Don't you know that you can't park here? Last one, number eight. You can go anywhere you want. You can go anywhere you want. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about with can't is the fact that there is a very, very bad word in English, which is very similar to the pronunciation of can't. So you must make sure that your can't, ant, ant, ant has those tight, tight lips and the tight cheeks. 
Um, I'm not going to write the word here for you. I think that you can easily find it through a Google search. Um, be very careful of your pronunciation. So that's it for this lesson. Let me know down in the comments what was easy, what was hard. If you thought this lesson was way too easy, um, I've noticed a few problems in the classroom recently with can and can't, which is why I wanted to make this quick vocabulary, or this quick pronunciation practice um, to help us with those. Really, how you pronounce, you give a strong can and a strong can't, you're perfect. Don't change it. But so that your ear can adjust and you can hear the difference between I can go, I can't go. She can help you. She can't help you. Why can't she help you? How can you let him do that? Um, she told me that she can't help you. She told me that she can help you. So that you can hear those differences. Um, you can adjust your ear to that slight difference between can and can't. All right, students, that's it for me. See you later. Bye.